So now we have all the scenarios that were picked in the HACCP and so that we can create now our layer protection scenario. So no, our LOPA scenario is what we're going to call it. So we can regroup uh, according to the severity of the consequence those scenarios. And then we can see here again, this will be the hazard, the explanation or the description of a hazard. So you have the initiating causes on one side. So this initiating causes is that what initiates a certain mechanism. And if that mechanism is not stopped and it goes all the way down, uh, it will end up in a hazardous event. It will end up in an unwanted event, something that we don't really want to get there. So that would be um, expressed in a bow tie. And we will see how Safeguard Profile also offers us a, a graphical representation of our hazard. And very clearly, we can have uh, some information of uh, how what the weakest points are in our scenario and to pay attention to and where the safeguards could be applied. First of all, on the left hand side of your bow tie will be the preventive layers or trying to prevent that ha hazardous event or that unwanted event from happening. And, and then on the right hand side, you have the mitigation layers or recovery measures. That means after you had the unwanted event. So what do I do now? I need to cope with those situations and try to stop the sequence of events uh, so that the, the worst credible consequence already identified before it doesn't get to term. So if I can do that, then I have still the means to stop that mechanism before it gets to the target. So the target would be, for example, if we're talking about health and safety, target would be a human or a human that is going to probably lose his life if there is a loss of containment and there is an explosion or, or so there's a fire, for example. Sometimes when you come from hazard and operability studies, what you get is too many safeguards in there. So you get the high complexity uh, of scenarios that get complex because you have too many safeguards in there. What happens when you have too many things that you sometimes don't understand really what are happening? That leads you to make unwanted errors. Nobody wants to make errors, but they happen. And when things are complex, we're, we are prone to make more errors. And those errors are going to end up in false trips. The word trips here means stopping your plant unnecessarily because it, it's too sensitive or too complex the situation that because the equipment is not interacting between itself, then it stops all the time because he wants to be very safe. So we need to do some something in order to simplify the system with respect, for example, amount of safeguards. In addition to that, if you have too many safeguards, well, well you have to maintain them, all of them, right? And you have to make sure that they're working in right order. That's why they are there, because somehow we, we need them. So how do we know if we need them or not? One way to find out whether we need those safeguards or not, and whether they have they are giving us this the right amount of risk reduction, is to go through a, an analysis of those safeguards, so layer protection analysis. The equipment has to be replaced. They have their end of life, right? So, a certain point in time, you will have to replace that instrumentation, and it is part of your analysis also with respect to how much money you have to make in order to keep your plan running and so on. Sometimes it can lead you to a very high operating and engineering cost. And that would be, for example, the, the need or the increase bypasses, to increase bypasses in order to start taking care of all those devices. You don't want to stop now for every time that one of those devices uh, needs maintenance. Uh, and on top of that, now you need uh, training and to follow certain procedures. So the more you have, the more training you need, things get complex, right? So we try to avoid that. Safeguard profilers allow us to do that when we do the layer protection analysis. What we can do, so we can say, well, we can take all those um, safeguards that are not needed or the safeguards that can really be simplified and then we can maybe put only two or three of those safeguards that have the same amount of risk reduction, uh, but that they will give us less complexity, they will give us less maintenance, right? Because now instead of having 10, we're going to have two. And now our operating and engineering cost is going to go down. So by having that analysis done, we will reduce maintenance and testing. The engineering would 
be lower. We'll have easier to understand processes and systems. Uh, we will be improving again the the tripping of those systems. If I have ten things I could trip today, well now I have only two, and I think I will be in better control of this. Also, in the amount of training there have to be done, I, there are only two or three pieces of equipment on which I have to be training, not 50 or 10. So all this could be recorded and kept, or so the result of this analysis, of this layer protection analysis, and uh, creating already these recommendations that are going to become the specifications of those safeguards. Right now. now we're starting to be more concrete on the decisions of uh, what type of safeguards do we want, what are the characteristics of those safeguards that we want, how robust do they have to be. So this is the right moment uh, to do that. Safer Profiler is the tool uh, that is allowing us to do that. Coming from the hazard uh, analysis, is the team would have, have identified already those hazard scenarios. So a hazard scenario starts with uh, a deviation caused by one piece of equipment maybe breaking, right? Or an operator making a mistake. That could be uh, another unwanted uh, mistake. So that will and that will happen at certain frequencies or likelihoods in time. So that's what our we put in there as a, our first uh, a factor in the equation to find out what is my total mitigating frequency. So then, if that uh, event frequency I it is too high, so the question would be now too high with respect to what? To a tolerable frequency. I've been talking about before about this tolerable frequency well that is uh, you can extract that from your risk metrics so where is that uh, tolerable place and that tolerable place most of the time when we come from high uh, level of risk we have to minimize that risk so how do we minimize that risk so we minimize that risk using uh, reducing the frequency uh, or the reducing the likelihood of that hazardous event ending up in the unwanted event how do we do that? So now we have certain frequency of equipment happening and now we add another event. That other event will be a safeguard. So if that first cause happens, then I will have a safeguard and that safeguard or that event is supposed to take me to a safe place. So now we have two things that have to happen before I reach the center of the bow tie or before the consequence happen or the that unwanted uh, consequence that I don't want to happen. So now the event has to happen and the safeguard has to fail. So now it, the likelihood was reduced a lot. And when we will be talking about risk, risk is, of, is in function of frequency or likelihood with respect to the severity of the consequence, right? So what the only thing that we're doing here at the moment by adding uh, safeguard is reducing that likelihood of uh, uh, that unwanted event from happening or arriving all the way to the consequence uh, from happening. How many safeguards do we have to add in the middle? So how many events have to fail? That would be indicated by how much can I tolerate that frequency, right? So at the beginning I will have the initiated event frequency and we can multiply that by the probability of failure of my first safeguard, second safeguard and so many safeguards. How much? until my total mitigator frequency is equal to my total or what I accept as a tolerable frequency. So if I have TF divided by MF, so total frequency divided by mitigator frequency, if they both match, that means I will ha it will have to be equal to 1. I'm including here some mathematical equations and this comes uh, from the book of uh, the CCPS book. Here now we have something different in layer protection analysis. In layer protection analysis, we have several scenarios identified in the hazard and operability study. So what we're going to do with those scenarios at the end, we will find out they have they all work together towards the same consequence with the same severity. So you might have uh, in a location or you might have in a unit um, different sources of risk. So how much is risk is coming from deviation A or how much risk is coming from deviation B? All that risk is all of it working towards the same 
uh, consequence, the same severity, and all that risk, you cannot just look at one piece, you have to look at the overall risk coming at you or coming towards that uh, location, or, or you might look at it from the point of view being close to that um, unit. So you need to add those mitigated frequencies that we discussed before. So risk coming from initiated event one or deviation one, or the second cause might be coming from a different deviation, right? It doesn't have to be the same deviation and so on. So we add all those pieces of risk that are coming uh, at me and that I have to add, right? So at the end, I will end up adding the mitigated frequency A plus B plus C from all those cases and get uh, my total mitigated frequency. Now, I still, the tolerance frequency number that I had before was with respect to that severity. And all of these ones are contributing to the same uh, severity. So I have to match now with my total mitigator frequency has to be equal to my equal or, or less than my tolerable frequency. So if I divide total frequency divided by my total mitigated frequency, then I will have reduced my risk to a tolerable level, which is the idea. So here's a, a graphic representation of what I was talking about before. You can see here this person standing there in that unit. So you can uh, sum up the frequencies uh, for those multiple scenarios that, for example, have the same geographical area or they are in the same process unit or uh, they are affecting the same location that you have uh, as an interest there to study the risk common, uh, all the risk that could be aggregated for that location. So um, they all have something in common that they have the same severity or the same co worst credible scenario uh, that could end up there. So that would be the total risk that we need to take into account. So here you can see that there's risk that might be coming from the column in the back that could be affecting that person, for example, and maybe the severity, the loss of his life. So there's a furnace in there, so there's some risk coming at him because he is also exposed to that uh, type of hazards coming from, from the furnace, something happening there, or from that big tank. There's uh, also there's some risk coming from, from that that will also affect that person. So all those sources of risk has to be taken into account. And usually we do that with our layer protection analysis uh, scenario that we're going to study. So that's uh, very important. Now we are seeing that there's a difference between hazard identification or hazard operability studies and layer protection analysis, right? So we are maybe now we are grouping certain nodes. Now the noding part on the layer protection analysis gets a little bit different now. So now we are aggregating certain nodes that have something in common. They have the same consequence severity, right? And also we will uh, see that it will be represented for a specific category. Category meaning whether it's uh, for health and safety, environmental, economic. And the reason is because for health and safety, the category uh, or what I call a risk receptor for category for health and safety that would be uh, the tolerance that the company has or the tolerance that we have as a society with respect to loss of life might be different than the tolerance that we have for lo loss of an asset. So we can tolerate maybe more losing an asset than losing uh, that a person losing its life. In that case, that tolerable frequency number might be uh, different from each cate category. So for each one, uh, we will have a different point of reference towards the mitigated frequency that we need. At the end, we will see that we have one driving case, and that one driving case also will give us information of what's happening in our in our scenario. Sometimes the 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 need of to put a safety implemented function will not be required because of a uh, loss of an asset, or it will be required maybe because of environmental reasons, right? because the environmental resource today, we might have less tolerability to that event happening than um, losing an asset. So that those are the things that you discover during this layer of protection analysis. And the good thing is all can be recorded. Safeguard Profiler is set up in such a way 
that all this analysis is very simple uh, to see. Now, if I have a bow tie of this hazard analysis for which I can see all these scenarios developing and interacting together, so this is a graphical representation that helps me a lot in understanding. I can concentrate more on the what's really happening with the right uh, overview, with the uh, amount of detail that I need to look at the scenario, not start playing around with uh, uh, spreadsheets and finding columns and rows and where does it go, I might very easily get lost in there. So Safeguard Profilers allows me to see the scenarios or in other words, see the world in a different um, perspective, right? Uh, specifically trying to analyze the scenario, not getting lost in calculations and uh, other stuff that might be going on at the same time. So we get the hassle being ported already, and now what do we do? Well, we start picking up those HACCP scenarios that have to be put together, right? So we, we can identify there, and we, s we talked about before about these consequences, right? So what are the scenarios that have the same consequences and the same severity? For example, here, severity 5. So um, Safeguard Profile can help us to identify those scenarios that have the same consequence, which we need to regroup correct so and they might be coming from different um, deviations right so safer profiler will identify for us uh, here in this upper right hand column will tell us you have three consequences with the same severity and those consequences uh, are with respect to the same unwanted event that we don't want to happen we can regroup that and at the end that regrouping of that hazardous scenario that works towards that same severity of consequence will be our layer protection analysis scenario. Right, so we have to go through all the nodes of the HAZOP and this gives already a, an indication because it's a machine safeguard profiler will be able to identify which ones are the same, which consequences are the same as long as we kept consistency during our HAZOPs. Sometimes in the description of the consequences, we don't use the same words, but we have to be intelligent enough or paying enough attention to what we're doing during the hazards in order to take advantage. And if it is the same consequence, well, reward it in the same way or just copy paste so that uh, we have the same pattern to be searched by the software. So in that case, Safer Profiler can help us if we are careful enough during the hazards to uh, identify those consequences so that they could be identified correctly and the same, right? So that the machine can find those patterns and tell us where do we have to go. So after we do that and we go through this process, uh, that's what we call a pre-LOPA work, right? So pre-work in order to create those scenarios that now include several sources of risk right so that we need that uh, in order to do a, a better um, analysis a better understanding of the sources of risk that work towards that bad severity of the consequence that we don't want to happen